It is 15 days since President Muhammad Buhari took oath of office for another term in office. And so, as usual, Nigerians are speaking about their expectations from the president. A group, a non-governmental organization, the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, alongside its partners, have released a report of a survey and poll conducted on the expectations of Nigerians for the Buhari second term in office. The findings are the hopes, and some of the hopes of Nigerians are not far-fetched. Interesting, but well, that is perhaps a reality of the citizens. Most of the respondents want Buhari to tackle the economy. That is the number one on the agenda of some of the respondents, followed by the issues of security. And uh, you will find interesting that kidnapping is top on the issues of security. The third major thing Nigerians want Buhari to do is jobs, jobs, jobs. They want him to provide jobs. Let's get into the matter, everyone. I have a, a very interesting panel tonight. One of the brains behind the report and the survey is Dr. Bell Hua. He's uh, the executive director of Africa Polling Institute uh, is, uh, in Abuja studio. I also is in the middle there. Thank you so much, Dr. Be uh, Bell, for coming. And also, Mr. Daniel Buala, a member of the APC and a lawyer. Mr. Kasim Afegbua is a member of the PDP. Mr. Afegbua is on the left of your screen, and Mr. Uh, uh, Buala is on the right of your screen. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. Let's begin with Dr. Bell. Uh, from what you discovered, uh, these are the expectations of Nigerians ahead of the next four years. What comes out to you? Uh, is, are you surprised by these uh, expectations from Nigerians, or uh, what exactly comes out to you, to you from the report? Well, Sean, thank you for having me. I think first things first, I want to say that uh, um, the Buhari Meter Survey, it's a project of CDD, the Center for Democracy and Development, and Africa Polling Institute partnered with CDD to conduct this survey. Well, it's, it's a 5,019 sample size survey and even slides across the country and representative of the entire nation. We polled citizens in the 36 states of the country and the FCT. And we, we're asking them basically what are the top policy issues that you want President Buhari to um, you know, focus his attention in the next four years. So economy, as you rightly said, is the first issue, security, the second issue, um, infrastructure, the third issue, education. Interestingly, corruption has been relegated to number five. Only 4% um, identified corruption as a key um, you know, policy issue. So if we deconstruct the economy a bit, 35% of those who want the president to focus on the economy want him to focus on job creation. This is because job creation is the big elephant in the room. Um, th if you look at the demographics of this data, 63% are made up of youths between the ages of 18 and 35. And these are the aspirations of the youth that they need jobs. And of course, there's also the issue of poverty eradication. Poverty is a major issue. We saw poverty on the fields while we were conducting this survey. And of course, the economic policies, um, Nigerians want government to be more decisive with economic policies that can improve their welfare. And when you come to the issue of security, 24% um, said security is the next most important policy issue that they want President Buhari to tackle. If you look at the demographics of that number, you find out that the upper, the northern half of the country has um, at least 30% on average who identify security as a major issue compared to about 15% um, on the southern half of the country that see um, security as a major issue. And five major areas were identified as the key security concerns. As you rightly said, number one is kidnapping. And we found this interesting that by a major margin of 5%, kidnapping has taken the shine out of the Boko Haram insurgency. So we see a situation where, because this is nationwide, it's spread across the nation, I'm sure you can tell all the roads and the areas where kidnapping is going on. So we have kidnapping, 24%. Boko Haram insurgency, 19%. Um, you also have political thuggery and cultism at 18%, in addition to banditry at 17%, and the headers, um, farmers' headers conflict at 12%. So these are the major security concerns that Nigerians have 
and one president Dr. Barry Bell, uh, because uh, I will, you, you, made, you made some recommendations based on what people are saying. Uh, let me quickly allow uh, my other respondents there with you to re respond quickly. Uh, you have done your work. You've done your survey. Let's get the politicians, uh, the, those who are of interest in these areas, to, to get talking. Let me start with you, Mr. Kasim Afegbua. Uh, you were of the APC before now, but you, you spoke loudly for the PDP in the last election. Would you say, uh, based on what Nigerians want President Buhari to do in the next four years, would you say that this government got its priorities right or wrong? Uh, well, first and foremost, let me say categorically that uh, whatever this particular organization has done is just confirming what is obvious. And let me thank Dr. Belhua for taking the initiative to sound out Nigerians. If it had come from Kasim Afegboa, they would say, oh, what ex will you expect him to, to do or to say? But having said that, the fact that this kind of statistics are coming out confirms that the first four years of the APC-led government was a colossal failure. Whether anybody likes it or not, they have been the sole distributor of poverty, hunger, and deprivations in the land. And so to that extent, they don't need any reminder that the economy of the country has to be recovered, that the economy has to wear two solid foot, you know, to the extent that they will be able to create jobs. Uh, Nigerian, Nigerian job losses rose from 12.1 million, uh, uh, 12 .1 million uh, you know, uh, persons to 23.9 million in the last four years. That means there have been serious job losses. And so this government needs to bring back those who have lost their jobs first, before even talking about 100 million Nigerians that will be taken out of poverty in the next 10 years. So I think the APC-led federal government is just rotating in circles and expecting different results. If you want to drive your economy, you must get your security architecture right. Who are those guys who are coming to invest in your economy? Are they, are they the ones who will be facing the issue of uh, unbanditry, kidnappings, you know, and bad roads? Or are they the ones who will not be saved, or whose, uh, whose uh, investment will not be saved in a country where, when there are court judgments, they are hardly obeyed. So you need to get your architecture right in All the right. area of security. Let, let me, let me get... Uh, of rule of law. Yeah, yeah, so Mr. Afegbua. Analysis, All right. you, you, are, you, you be seem to be doing the right thing. Let me get your friend, who is also in white attire there, Mr. Buala, is of the APC. He may not agree with you totally for some of the things you raised. Mr. Buala... Uh, Mr. Febua will describe what your party has done in the last four years as a colossal failure. If you look at some of the expectations of Nigerians, uh, the same question I posed to him, would you say that the government of the APC and President Buhari's government is on the right trajectory, is getting its priorities right or wrong? Well, uh, Mr. Kasim Febua is wrong, but in his understanding and in his assessment of the report. And uh, ordinarily, if this is a classroom, Mr. Faber would have failed, and he will require to repeat the class, because he was mentioning court orders, and nowhere in the report is court orders mentioned there. He emphasized poverty eradication as if that causes the highest percentage. It is even 7% in the survey report. Now, I want to start by saying that all of the elements identified in the survey report, the APC as a party quite appreciates and recognize their existence and the need for us to improve on them. I will only need to recalibrate that because uh, from the survey report, they gave 52% of the assessment from the respondents to mean that 52% uh, of the Nigerians are more particular and concerned about the economy than all other aspects. I will recalibrate it to rather put 52% at security because you need a secured environment to be able to do business. You need a secured environment to create jobs. You need a secure environment to build technology. You need a secure environment to be able to do uh, infrastructure. In any case, they have mentioned uh, things such as uh, education, and they gave 7%. I am of the view that the requirement for education is way above that. But in any case, the party has a comprehensive and robust policy agenda 
that will address all of that. If I want to take, for example, job creation, which is the major concern of Kasim Afegbuan, you will see that both from the agriculture sector, the party looks forward to creating 1 million jobs, creating additional 500,000 jobs. Even if you come to a school feeding program, by the time you improve the number of school feeding programs, you are going to create about 300,000 jobs there. If you look at areas uh, of infrastructure and development, there are robust pol policy uh, uh, papers and policy direction that will lead us towards job creation. If you talk about poverty eradication, the minute you revamp the economy and create investment, naturally po poverty will go down. If you look at the aspect of education, which is my area of emphasis, All right. you would also see that APC as a party has proposed and we're pursuing a digitalized system of learning. Let me pause you for a moment, uh, Mr. Buala. This is at the heart of what Nigerians are looking forward to. A lot of expectations from Nigerians. A lot of people will tell you that Nigerians do not want too many things. They just want the basic. It does look like that is reflected in this report today. But you made some recommendations, uh, Dr. Bell. Tell us, uh, summarize to us the recommendations that you made in this report. Thank you, Shil. Um, I think before I, I go straight on the recommendations, I want to point out, just to make a correction um, to Daniel, who had said that if he was the one, he would swap um, economy and security. I mean, these are the opinions of Nigerians. We consider the opinions of Nigerians quite germane and golden. Um, in the first place, the reason why we have an increased situation of insecurity is because there are no jobs. And that's what came out clearly from this survey. If there were jobs, then the rate of security will not be as high as it is um, today. But in terms of recommendations, we have demand-side recommendations and supply-side recommendations. If I should start with the supply-side recommendations, first, Espas um, advised that the government should, the president should start with constituting a strong economic team made up of tested and trusted experts who will be able to look into the economic issues facing the country and tackle them headlong. Secondly, there needs to be increased uh, in investment in education. Um, the education system of Nigeria today is currently underfunded and needs to properly be funded. And of course, we need to improve the quality of our graduates and revamp our technical and vocational education. A situation where we have to invite um, tilers, bricklayers, and artisans from Togo, from Benin Republic, is simply unconscionable. Also, the government needs to come up with a comprehensive plan of providing affordable housing, sustainable energy, health care, and education to the mass of Nigerians. Then if you come to the, sub, the demand side, which, um, you know, suggested by Nigerians themselves, is that one, the issue of power needs to be resolved. If you look at SMEs, for example, the small and medium-sized enterprises, without power, they are unable to function effectively, they are unable to add value, and a lot of their cost goes into the area of power. So a lot has to be done to, to improve the situation of power in the country. Again, let, let me pause you for a moment. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Bell, let me pause you for a moment because of our time. Let me quickly allow Mr. Kasim Afegbua to come in. There are lots to talk about, but because of the limited time, uh, Mr. Afegbua, if you quickly shoot straight to the, uh, to the matter, um, your party said you have an alternative, you have a way of doing it better. Uh, but some uh, in the APC will say you had 16 years, but you could not achieve it. You've been in government. Uh, if there is one thing that you think that this government, in certain agenda for this government, that the Buhari government should do urgently, what would that be? You see, it is not about what the government should do urgently. It is the fact that the government has no capacity to deliver whatever you tell it to do. There is crass incompetence in the last four years, and it has continued to manifest itself day in, day out. If you t they know what to do. The manifesto of the APC is very clear. I was a member of the APC. How many issues have they attended to in the manifesto of the APC from the first item to the 21st item? They, are, they, 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 they don't have the capacity, you know, the leadership up to now, 14 days after inauguration, no cabinet, no names have been announced, nothing. You have hearing any fake news here today, fake news near to tomorrow. I'm happy that Buala is here now as a member of the APC. Before now, I used to see him as a, as, a, as, a, as a policy analyst and a lawyer, so I'm sure he has joined now. Maybe he will learn the rules along the line. <laughs> but, you know, I teased him, I teased him uh, at the back room here that, oh, 
It's good that he's coming out now to, to show that he's a member of the APC. But by and large, you see, when you talk about the, this particular report, the, this organization has just told you the expectations of Nigeria, that this government has crippled the economy. They want more to All be right. done in the area of economy and also the area of security. I said it earlier on, and Buwal also made allusion to that, because he said he would have loved a reverse, that once uh, it, the, the, the Nigerians want a secure environment so that their investment can be secured. All right, but Mr. 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 Buwala, let's allow Mr. Mr. Buwala to respond to no some of the things. On yeah. the table, no strategy you know, to pursue that particular uh, initiative. So for me, I think... There let's are allow Mr. Buwala to, to, to come into the conversation now. The there is a lot of pressure on your party, Mr. Buwala. Nigerians are expectant. Those who voted and those who did not vote, Nigerians generally. And you have seen it, it is clear. He said... There is crass incompetence in your, the, your, your government. That's what he said. Yeah. Right. Well, actually, we do not, in this second term, intend to waste our precious time trying to engage with PDP that has, over 15 years, not been able to prove anything that can be classified as near competence. Remember, it was during their time that they introduced ballot stuffing. It was during their time they introduced disobedience to court order. It is during their time they introduced the impeachment by force of a sitting governor. It is during their time they introduced the militarization of politics in Nigeria. You forgot about the $15 billion power that was injected into power sector. What did we see? The education started declining during their period. So, but we don't have time. There is no time actually to waste discussing with PDP over their mundane failure, which has brought Nigeria to where we are. We have comprehensive policy agenda in the next level proposal that I think that our party will make effort to make it available to Nigerians either through leaflet or through uh, the television or website. And then people can get focused on it because focus creates blindness. If you're focused on what you want to do, you'll be blinded to the mundane activities of the PDP, PDP people. They are suffering from post-election traumatic disorder. <laughs> that is what is... You remember the other time Kasim Afebi was in Florida? You introduced me as one from Florida in his response. He said I was in Canada. It's a problem that PDP has, but we'll work it out. We'll work it out. <laughs> Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, I know both... <laughs> perfect gentlemen, both of you are. And uh, thank you so much uh, for disagreeing uh, in the gentleman way. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Afegbo, for coming here, Mr. Daniel Boala. Thank you so much for coming. Dr. Belua, it's a pleasure having you, and it's good to see you. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on. Well, that's our beach for tonight, everyone. It's Friday. Go get some uh, wonderful time with your family, and enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone.